being stomped on, being trampled, being dominated, anything wholesome under attack. That's my rant. And, and Pastor Chuck Baldwin talks about this all day. It's Christianity that ended slavery, real Christians. It's Christianity that gave us the free market. It's Christianity that gave us due process. It's Christianity. They say get rid of what's old. They're bringing in the old barbarism of the occult and of a dumbed-down public controlled by the high priest who tells you give him your kids to sacrifice or your daughters to have sex with or the snake god won't vomit out the moon at the next eclipse. The age of reason begins with Christians, not the phony churches that are government, state-run churches like China or Russia under Stalin. Now, that's my rant. Chuck Baldwin joins us. He has written the book that we sell, Romans 13, The True Meaning of Submission. Uh, but I've heard Christians call into conservative radio and say we should submit and issue these marriage licenses and all the rest of it. This is a conquering, folks. This is a takeover. This is a domination. Because standing in the way of world government and a microchip population and a cashless society is the true Christians. That's why the Pope will travel the first time to Cuba to be worshipped by the communist dictator and his brother Raul. That's why he's coming here to meet in secret with Boehner and then address Congress. The globalists are making their move. They blackmailed the Catholic Church. This even came out in The Guardian to put in the Jesuit Pope calling for world government. There are a lot of good Catholic people. I'm not attacking you. The Protestant churches have been taken over as well. But it's here. It's happening. It's happening. And so many Christians say, praise God, it's a sign of the end of the world. What a cop-out. If you believe in Christ... Standing before Christ at the white throne judgment, would Christ say, I know you if you didn't stand up for unborn? But here's what I want to tell the phony Christians. It doesn't matter what you do at your 501c3 church where you want to feel good and make some business deals. Like a Pharisee. I'm not judging you. God will. There are good people infiltrating Planned Parenthood. There are good people in the Pentagon exposing Obama funding ISIS. There are people of conscience who can't submit to tyranny because they've already submitted to God. And if you've submitted to God, and I'm certainly not perfect, then you, there's no way you can submit to open conscious evil. Chuck Baldwin, ChuckBaldwinLive.com. Thank you for joining us. You've written some powerful editorials as of late dealing with the situation in this country. But uh, we've talked about things compacting and accelerating. They are now at light speed and only speeding up. What are we watching right now? And I hope folks know historically the judgment, once a nation becomes reprobate, always comes as night follows day. Thank you for joining us, Chuck Baldwin. Thank you, Alex. Great. Well, appreciate everything you just said there in the opening monologue of this hour. I just, uh, I just want to kind of reiterate some things that you said. Uh, first of all, relative to the marriage issue, you're exactly right when you say that the real problem here, and, and this is what churches and Christians should be noticing, is that Years ago, toward the middle and the end of the 19th century, as you've already noted, the, the institution of marriage, to use your word, was bastardized by the means of which they placed it under the authority of the state. For over 1,800 years of church history, the state had nothing to do with marriage. The institution of marriage is a divine marriage, is a divine institution. This is not a civil contract, and this is the thing that some of our libertarian friends are missing. They're applauding the Kim Davis jailing in Kentucky, and they're talking about this being a right of civil contract. We all understand that every American citizen has the right to enter into civil contracts, including homosexuals. That's not the issue. Marriage is not a civil contract. It is a divine institution created by God in the very beginning of the history of mankind. Therefore, this is not a jurisdiction of the state. It never has been, it never should be today. But in the, going into the 20th century, when the church sat back and allowed the state to begin to exercise authority over marriage, then it became a civil contract. It became something under the auspices and authority of the state, just as the church did in 1954, with the advent of the 501c3 amendment. And the we're state. now making the state truly God, and then all these liberals think they're getting rights from the state when it's a total fraud. And here's the thing that makes this Kentucky case so interesting, because 
Kim Davis was actually the one who was obeying the law. Now, now, now think about this. In 1996, President Bill Clinton, after the Congress and the Senate had passed the Defense of Marriage Act, DOMA, Clinton signed it. It became the federal law of the land. That marriage was between a man and a woman. Okay, that was in 1996, signed by a Democrat president, Bill Clinton. That was the law of the land nationally. All right. So now what this decision was basically doing was reviewing the DOMA decision. And we know what the court did. What the court did is they ruled against DOMA. That was the essence of, of the of the court's decision. So the court's making law. That's the other part that I, that I wanted to get out is the fact that our first article in the first section all legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in the Congress of the United States. The Supreme Court has no authority to make law. It renders opinions, okay? So it made an opinion on DOMA is, is what this was all about. So what happened whenever the Supreme Court said that basically DOMA was unconstitutional? Well, that means there's no federal law relative to marriage. So that means everything reverts back to the states. So right now there is well, what people are they're saying that now it's the federal law of the land. No, what the decision actually did was negate DOMA, which was the federal law of the land, meaning now that there's no federal law relative to marriage. That's right. So it That's does revert to the state. Stay there. This is key. And then now they've jailed her. I mean, this just shows their mindset. Alex Jones here back live. Pastor Chuck Baldwin of ChuckBaldwinLive.com joins us. And of course, his son's a constitutional lawyer works with him there in his operation but chuck baldwin really knows his stuff i've studied this in depth and he knows more than i do about it but uh the break kind of stole his thunder he was about to get to the fact that she was following kentucky law but even madonna's brother who is a homosexual and i used to try to be friendly and say the word gay but it's about controlling language so now they say i can't say father or mother or boy or girl or he or she so i'm gonna start using the scientific words because it shows how they get you to start doing what they say, and pretty soon everything's banned. Pretty soon telling a woman she's attractive is banned. Uh, pretty soon men's barbershops are banned. Uh, pretty soon brown bags are banned. This is a cult of fighting with each other. And Chuck Baldwin, it really is an attack on humanity itself. It's so alien against the, the main biology of humans that men and women loving each other is somehow inherently bad because it hurts someone else who doesn't feel like that. This is outrageous control freak behavior. The state and weird, creepy groups trying to insert themselves into our lives, our marriages, saying our kids belong to the state. Creepy MSNBC host. I mean, these people are really villainous, sick perverts. It's, it's not about freedom at all. It's, it's about tyranny of the mind. And, and I think that's the battle that's going on today. And you're exactly right. Kim Davis was obeying the laws of the state of Kentucky, which she swore an oath to, which now become the law of the land because DOMA was overturned by the Supreme Court decision, meaning that the, 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 the Constitution that had, had written, that was written, established that the, the Congress only can create law, that the Supreme Court does not make law, so by negating DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act, a marriage between a man and a woman, it now reverts to the laws of the states. The state of Kentucky had, had said in their constitution that marriage is between a man and a woman. Kim Davis was upholding her oath. What's interesting, too, is that in the state of North Carolina, in the state of Utah, and in the state of Alabama, there are um, county clerks and courthouses all over those states that are refusing to marry anyone, heterosexual or homosexual. And by the way, as a minister, that's the decision I've taken. I have made the decision after the June decision by the Supreme Court that I will no longer uh, do a ceremony over any couple, homosexual or heterosexual, of course I won't marry homosexuals anyway, that have a state license. In fact, I'm happy to report, Alex, I just had my first marriage a couple of weeks ago without a state license. Fortunately, here in the state of Montana, common law marriage is still recognized as lawful. There's only about five or six states, unfortunately, in the country that still recognize common law. And that's a subject that the, I think the listeners of your program should take note of, and they should be appealing to the legislatures to get it on the books to recognize, again, 
common law marriage. Absolutely, because we have to take our power back or we'll be usurped by the uh, the imposters. When I say perverts, there aren't just perverts who want to pick kids up in parks. There's perverts that want to get in our lives and our families and tell us what to do. This is outrageous. Why would anyone want to live under something like this? And think about this. Now with this, this Supreme Court ruling, we've got transgender bathrooms that are being put in just about every school system across America. Transgender bathrooms. Which just shows they're going to teach schools. the kids to do this. Yeah, and think about this, too. You know, all these people talk about, well, you know, it was right to put Kim Davis in jail because she violated. Think about this. 1962, 1963, Supreme Court removed prayer and Bible reading from the public schools of America. But what's happening across the United States today? In school district after school district, there are prayer rooms that are being put in the public schools to accommodate the Muslim students. The Muslim students are allowed to leave classes during school time, go to those prayer rooms, and conduct their Muslim prayers on school property during school time. Now, where is the, you know, where... where well, that's the, it. Why is it selectively enforced only against Christians? It's, it's exactly. It's because this is an attack against Christianity itself. That's why I wrote the column a couple of weeks ago talking about the collapse of Christianity. And here's the thing that, that gets my goat about the whole thing, Alex, is I don't, I don't blame the Supreme Court, and I don't blame, blame the liberals, and I don't blame the secularists and all these people that are pushing this agenda. I blame the churches, the pastors of America. They're the ones that have the power and, and, and the duty to stand up against this stuff. Instead, they're them. getting up and saying Romans 13 because they're exactly. state-run. Exactly. And that goes back to the book that Tim and I wrote, about the you know the true meaning of submission Romans 13 because it's just it, it's right out of Hitler's Germany this was the same doctrine that they taught to the churches in Germany during the Rise well Hitler has Hitler. famous quotes about I hate the Bible and it's a bunch of you know baloney basically he says it's not it's it's a fraud but I do like Romans 13 stay there uh, we're going to come back with Chuck Baldwin and break down the Hitlerian Romans 13 out of context, which flies in the face of the entire Bible that Christians are supposed to submit to any order. We're on the law that founded this republic said that the state was not God. Even some of the people that weren't true Christians who were founding fathers, most of them were Christian, agreed to all this because they understood that the state then wouldn't be God they can set themselves up as God. And that's what all the foolish liberals ought to get is that God wants to give us free will. True Christianity gives you the right of choice. So in America, you got the right to exercise free will at a level never before seen. As long as you didn't force it on somebody else. Now we're seeing tyranny and we're seeing what occultism does. It seeks to make you accept what it's doing. It tells you your kids belong to us. You're going to do what we say. You can't have fathers and mothers because that hurts somebody else. You can't have wealth because that hurts somebody else. And then the elites themselves are totally exempt from all the rules they foist on us. Pastor Chuck Baldwin is our guest. If you'd like to talk to him about this issue particularly and where this country's going, 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. I'm going to plug here for a moment and then get back to that. But I'm going to say this first. My parents were pretty conservative growing up, but also liberal in ways. They were, grew up in the 60s, more fiscally conservative, but they were live and let live. I'd, I'd call them libertarians. And I'll be honest, um, I don't have a, a, a dislike bone in my body against homosexuals. Um, they run the gamut of different types of people. And I'm not up here judging people. I've got my own sins in my life. Things I do that I know isn't the best lifestyle, like drinking sometimes or having anger problems, uh, Stuff like that. I mean, none of us are perfect. But it's the consciousness of hurting people that's bad. It's trying to take free will that's bad. And I'll say this. The homosexual movement worldwide is a eugenicist, depopulation, anti-family movement. I've proven it. I've made films on it. And they're putting chemicals in the food and water to change the sexuality of people. That's declassified. We're being messed with. And now as people are changed and as things become different, and some people, you could say we're naturally that way, some people genetic, whatever. This stuff's always gone on in history. What I'm getting at is just as Sodom and Gomorrah, whether you believe that Old Testament story or not, it says they were coming to people's houses saying, we're going to force sex on you. You're going to do what we want. 
That's where this has basically come. And the homosexual activist Gore Vidal said 